Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, it's August. It's uh, hot and scorching in Los Angeles. That's where I come to you from. No matter where you are in the world, I hope you are safe and that you are doing wonderful. Thank you. Seems like uh, we have uh, visitors already. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and a domestic abuse uh, consultant. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are present, thank you for being here. It's a, such a lovely afternoon. And if you are watching this on a replay, please go hashtag a replay. So what are we going to talk about today? I really didn't uh, plan on talking about this, but something came up yesterday. And I got a call from a potential client, and I wanted to speak to you about this. This might be a bit difficult to talk about, but I'm going to go on a limb and speak about this. I, so I hope um, that if it resonates with you, great. And if you know someone, you can share it with. And... Um, so let's delve into this. I got a call from a potential client wanting to do a consultation with me. And I usually like to do a consultation so that we find out if there is a rapport, establishing a rapport before they even come in. They'd like to hear uh, my voice if they have any questions going over what hypnotherapy is, what I do as a counselor. Um, and that they can ask, uh, we go over in all misconceptions and everything. Sometimes my consultation is over the phone and there are times that my clients, potential clients come into the office. I also do Skype for those of you who did not know. So she calls me and says, do you uh, work with relationships? Well, it's what about the relationships? If it is a marriage and family, I usually refer to marriage and family counselors and therapists. And she said, I am going into extreme anxiety and panic. That I can help you with. Hypnotherapy is one of the best ways that I know that I can immediately and easily and gently help them overcome their panic and anxiety, right? So that can they can feel more in control and that they can cope with whatever it is that is stressing them and creating the anxiety. Hello, Adrian. How are you? So as we're speaking, and I probe the question, what exactly is happening? This is what the situation is. Been married for less than two years. Uh, she has been with her husband for over four years. And that they have no kids. She's got no family in the Southern California area. And she believes that she is in an abusive relationship. When it becomes, if I feel a client is in a danger zone, I refer them uh, to uh, either for them to call 911 or to call a hotline or to go into a shelter. But when they feel that they can handle it and they want to stay to, for whatever reason, it is not I or anyone else's business to tell them what to do, but we are here to guide them and support them and give them information so that they can make choices and decide what to do next and how to do it. So it's tools, techniques, information, support system, and everything that they need. By the way, did you know that 
in life, it's not what we don't want, but what it is that we want. I talk about this all the time. So even in hypnosis, we want to move towards the things we want in life, not the things we no longer want. So instead of going back and saying, I no longer want to feel this, I usually ask them, what is it that you want to feel? So she wants to feel at ease. She wants to feel safe. She wants to feel calm. And she wants to feel stronger. Her self-confidence. And those are things that I can easily and effortlessly help her gain her confidence, feel calmer. Hypnotherapy, in a way, is tapping into the subconscious mind to find the answers within, right? And as a domestic abuse counselor, automatically I safeguard her by words of affirmation that I am there with her, beside her. Now, what she is to do is instead of adding salt to the fire or to the wound, when her partner, her husband, is aggressive, and as she says, pulling my hair, kicking me, uh, hurting me, uh, bruising me, hitting me, uh, not punching, she says, he doesn't punch, but when he hits is when he is drunk. Uh, and then he apologizes. And then she went on with more detail. So what happens is at that time, when someone feels out of control, when they are drunk, when they are um, high in a way, either it can be through drugs or alcohol, they feel... Uh, more out of control and yet they think they are in control so this inhibition comes their anger is uh, risen and they get it out on the first person that there is and usually they don't hit or hurt anyone that they don't know but the ones that they do know so most times the abuse happens just like bullying in school. The abuse happens at home when someone becomes the punching bag, unfortunately, that they can handle it. And they think, I did something wrong. I said something wrong. I did, I placed this in the wrong place because if I move it and make it easy and right by them, then they will not feel it. Maybe this time they won't, but tomorrow they may not like it where it is. So it, it's not always about you fixing yourself or fixing the problem, but it's finding the communication. And she said, I threatened him that I'm going to leave him. My suggestion was stop threatening and find a way to make sure that he does not feel that you are going to leave him. You see, the ones who get into that cycle, I believe there is this in the core need for love because there's two elements. We are either fear-based or love-based. When either we don't feel loved or we haven't felt loved, and even love that it's internal, we are afraid of losing someone. We are afraid for fear in itself. And his fear of losing her might be worse. So he will try to control. And this can be he or she. It doesn't matter. But today we're giving this sample only. The fear of her leaving him might be so bad that the hurt will become more because he would want to stop her from leaving him. 
maybe someone else has left him and another person has left him and did not love him as much as he believes they need to love him. So it's the need for love. My suggestion was you stand strong and instead of taking the beatings that you have in the past and getting angrier, you find the strength within you to say this is not loving because you see a cycle of abuse is the person who hits them and especially when they are high they feel out of control just to control but then the next day they feel so bad and hurt because um, the intention was not to hurt it was to get that hurt out from the inside. And I'm not saying that I am a master in this, but it's a part of our emotions. When there's fear of someone leaving, they become more afraid because they are there because they love them at one point or another. And it's the internal love that needs to be cherished. It's the internal love that has to grow and blossom so that each individual feels, I am love. I feel loved. I am loving. The part of our self-esteem, not the confidence, but the esteem of feeling the worthiness of love and feeling worthy from the inside. It's as if, if you could just watch the little boy or the little girl inside and say, I am such a lovable person. You are loving. You are loved by me. So if each person can love the child within and empower the child because when we hurt someone else in a way it's like hurting the inside more and then feeling guilty for hurting someone where that was not the intention and the second thing I said was when it becomes like that just remind him is this loving when the next day he is sorry, remind him, is this loving? Because I love you. I want you to feel loved from the inside. What you did was not loving. And I want you to know that. How may I be more loving? Not by the things, but how can I feel, help you? And the person who is angry may not be ready for the help until the time that they are ready. We never know when someone is ready until they are ready. But there's times and that moment can be any moment. As long as they hear love and they hear instead of threat and fear, they are reminded of who they are, is not this burst of anger, this burst of fear, this burst. Those are just reactions that has accumulated for years and years and years. And that has become their uh, anger bursts and everything has become a way of behavior to that they have controlled whatever situation and yet they have been out of control. You see, uh, drunkenness brings uh, the, the feelings of all the feelings inside uh, out. And we say things when we are tipsy and it's the same as when we are in that state of hypnosis and we are just a little bit vulnerable. We speak our own internal truth and we speak what we feel instead of what we think because our thoughts, even though thoughts matter, word association is so powerful as I am doing it and I was sharing with her 
stop threatening, stop adding salt. But what you need to do is remind yourself that you have the strength, that you have tools and techniques and support system for you to know what to do and get help for both of you because they both love each other. And why is it that we always hurt the moment, the ones that we love the most? It's because we think they can handle it. But there comes a time, truly there comes a time that that person says, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. And no one really needs to be a punching bag or a doormat to anyone. Having that confidence to say, I am an individual that I matter, that what I say matters, and how I love, and I need to be cherished, and I need to be wanted, and I want to be loved and be loving. So, hi, Sidajan. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jack. Hi, Ray. Oh, hi, Ray. Hope you're doing wonderful. See, the problem with the cycle is it's not only them but or the person who's doing it it gets to a point that the person that is staying taking it and believe that they deserve it they take it for so long that it peels away their own strength their own esteem so they don't believe that they deserve any better and it doesn't happen immediately it happens just one day at a time one word at a time one uh putting down at a time and thinking that well i must have done wrong having the confidence to stick there, having the ability and the core just to endure it. The enduring part is a strength. But how much do we endure is also helping adding salt to both wounds because now we are enabling the person. And by sticking there, we're taking it. And most people who are in situations like this do not express it with family members, thinking that either they won't understand it or they're going to say, hey, just like the old days, you made the bed, lay in it. Or why don't you just be quiet, take it, because this person is a good person, is a provider, is a wonderful father, and for the fear of the children or for, for, for the fear of everything else, we stick around. And we stick around to a point until we no longer know who we are. If you or someone you know in that situation, there are so many people who can help. There is no shame to express. Find the ones who will support you and stand by you. There are ways that you can help someone in that situation. So, but the first thing they need to know is your fear is valid and your fear can also be false emotions appearing real that you are not worthy enough because you are. And this can be you as a man, you as a woman. It's a very difficult situation and no one knows what happens behind closed doors. No one has the right to judge 
Why don't you leave? Why didn't you leave? Because every single person has their reasons. But if the reason is that you don't see a way out, I want you to know that there is always support. If you believe that you can't leave because of either financial or the threat is that person is more in fear of their love to go away than anything else. So never ever threaten to leave. Never ever threaten because that feels like Find the tools, the techniques. And the first thing I will say is, whoever you are, wherever you are in this world, you deserve to be loved by you. So if there is a child and if you are in that situation, and that is what they are seeing. They are seeing you sticking around. And as children, what they see is they don't understand how to decipher, but that's what they're learning, that you are taking it. And they can't help you until they are not adult enough to comprehend what's going on what we do as women, we teach them. So empower your children by them knowing it's not their fault. It's not your fault. It, there is, it's not about a fault, but it's taking responsibility. Every single person has to take responsibility. And if it is something that it's harming your loved ones, I hope that that person, either you or someone you know, says, I no longer wish to hurt the persons I love. And the person who is taking it turns around and says, I am ready to love myself, appreciate myself, accept myself, and to stand up for myself. So in a way, when I say stand up for yourself, it's not to do this and wrong the person, but find the means to support and empower yourself or the person that needs it. So if you need anything, by all means, I'm here to stand by you to hold your hand, stand beside you. If need be, I will stand behind you so that you can lean upon me. And this is what I do for all my clients. And if need be, I will stand in front of you so that you can lean upon me. And if I can't do it, I've got plethora of support and counselors and therapists and other means that we can help you, support you, help you in many other ways. And that's what I'm here for. Um, to guide you. And a part of that is through hypnosis. What we do is for you to close your eyes, even just like this, for just a moment. Just go ahead and close your eyes. And as you breathe in, breathe in oxygen vitality. Recognizing that as you are right here, right now, you are meant to be here. That everything that has happened until this very moment, Consider it all those experiences. Consider it that it's happened for you. I know it is difficult to accept it, but it has been a part of this journey for you to be right here, right now, watching this. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Ray. Hello, every one of you. 
for some of you, this is hitting home. Years ago, it hit home for me. Validating every essence of you. Every organ, every tissue, every nerve, every muscle, your bones, your thoughts, your ideas, your desires, your needs, your wants, your pain, your hurt, every part of you, loving every aspect of you and recognizing that whatever, until this very moment sitting right here or listening, walking, sitting, no matter where you are, it is now this moment becomes a part of your history. And just look back with your eyes closed. It is not happening this very moment. But this is the moment you stand up for yourself and you say, how can I make this change? How may I begin my transformation, my change, my shift this very moment? This is the moment I want to make that leap of faith and say, I deserve. I deserve what I wanted to do. I deserve the career I've been dreaming about. And it could be this abusive relationship might not be at your home. It could be at work. It could be at school. It could be anywhere. What I gave was a sample of something that was happening at home. But this can happen anywhere. And don't you ever... Instead of don't you, I'm sorry, that is a negative term. I want you to believe. I want you to say yes to you. No one is going to do it for you except you. Because if you don't stand up for yourself, if you do not believe that you are worthy, nothing can happen. They say, we know how to diet, right? We've done the dieting a thousand times until we are either looking forward for something or we are so fed up that we say enough is enough. And that's where it comes to. But it's enough is enough, not in a negative way, in an angry way, but enough is enough. It's about time. I love me. It's about time. I make this relationship work lovingly. The relationship of me with myself, first and foremost. The relationship of me and my child. The relationship of me and then my partner. And then my family members, my coworkers, my friends. Sometimes we have to say, what if? What if I took that leap of faith and said yes to me? Hi, Annette. That is what I have been doing this last few months. Bless your heart. I know. I know you have. And so many have been in the same situation, keeping quiet, keeping face, keeping low in order for no one to judge. But you know what? No matter what happens, no matter where you go, no one is going to feed you. No one is going to come and open the door to do anything for you if you are quiet. But to seek help and to stand up for yourself and say, because if we don't do that, you know what's going to happen? And you know this better than anyone. And I'm saying you because it can be anyone. You can be just anyone. Your body will start deteriorating. Your body will start eating at you. It will break you down. It will break you down until you say, I have to put my body together. I have to put my spirit together. I have to put my sound mind together. I am stronger. I have the means and the power. Because if I can endure this, I am much stronger than I 
ever believed myself to be. This can be you. This can be someone you know. And so today's message is you do matter. And everything you do from now on is evoke the past. Recognize it. Don't suppress it. Don't push it down. Don't do what others have been doing to you. Don't beat yourself up. It's about time you rise and you raise the incredible level of your gift by rising, by standing, by expressing, by sharing, by being the best that you are. You are a gift of child. And become it. And know that you are worthy. Some people may say, I don't believe it. I don't feel it. How may I help you? How may I help you heal with it? So today's message was this. If there is anything I can do, uh, I want you to stand up and believe in yourself. <sighs> Collectively, there is something I wanted to share. Ah, where is my book? You know, I talk about, sometimes I even mention the butt. Uh, but what if I can't? But what if I can't uh, do this? But what if this happens? You know what? Stop all the butts. And uh, just like a butt up a cigarette, put it off, put it out, put it down, and no more butts. Uh, it's time to heal within. This has been a day of... Hmm, shedding light and i hope this message resonated with you uh, i'm here for you until next week i wish you all the best for you to know that is uh, there are many support systems so i say goodbye by saying god bless you and may the universal light be with you this is Lisa, and you may always find me at HealWithin.com. Goodbye. Be safe.